What's up, music fans of the internet? I'm Derek. And I'm Kevin. And together we're last week's album, and this week we're talking about Slur Up by Liam Hayes. But before we go any further, we're going to start things off like we always do, drinking a beer. Cheers, Kevin. Cheers, everyone at home. Cheers, Derek, and everyone at home. Let's slur up some beer. It's, I don't even know how you do that. Um, before we make a complete mess of ourselves over here, um, let me tell you about Liam Hayes. He uh, has been performing for a long time. He's ba he was originally from Chicago. Uh, and started playing under the name Plush back in 92. He appeared as himself in the movie High Fidelity, um, which is pretty cool. And Slur Up is his fifth U.S. album. Um, and this one um, follows 2014's Corp Soul Roller. And other interesting note, he has recently scored a gig uh, writing soundtrack to a movie. So very talented musician. He's now based in Milwaukee. And so there's some background. And now, uh, Ken, why don't you tell us what you thought Slur Up sounded like. Scored a gig writing a soundtrack. I see what you did there, Derek. And I like it. Um, I'm going to say that Slur Up sounds like Beck and Richard Swift hanging in the garage, sipping on Slurpees from 1975. What do you think it sounds like, Derek? I like it. I like it. Uh, I thought Slur Up sounds like a carousel of 70s rock sounds reimagined and concentrated into two-minute blasts. Yes. Like if you had orange juice, there's highly concentrate. There's like 70s rock, highly concentrated. And that is the album Slur Up. Uh, so, key track, which one did you pick out? I'm going with Focus. What about you? That's a great one. I'm actually going with Keys to Heaven. Uh, Focus comes up first, I believe, also the first single. So, uh, great place. Why don't you kick us off? Sure. Uh, Focus has these reeling guitars, trashy drums, swampy bass. Uh, these tongue-in-cheek vocals, one of my favorite lines is, Focus, keep it on the daydream. Um, the song itself is so focused that the guitar solo is laughably simple and short, and then it's right back to focusing on the rest of the song. Um, as Derek mentioned, another, uh, maybe not, maybe three-minute burst here, um, but ultimately it's glam rock meets garage rock, and just a fun, upbeat track all around, so... Definitely check out Focus. Tell us about Keys to Heaven, Derek. Keys to Heaven kicks off with this frolicking electric guitar riff, very active snare-heavy drum beat, and floating woozy keys, which uh, towards the end of the song uh, mirror what the electric guitar was doing earlier, which I thought was pretty cool. Just very catchy vocal melody going falsetto in the chorus, and at times where I thought this sounded very much like the Beatles, and even a little more specifically, uh, a Paul McCartney-led Beatles um, thing. The the song is kind of self-explanatory um, a little bit. You know, he kind of tells the story of ending up in a place, a uh, car broken down, and uh, he ends up um, pulling up to a home where people wait, a waiting room outside the gate. When you check in, you don't check out. And so he's there, presumably, in you know, at the pearly gates, if you will, and uh, they don't want him to stick around anymore. They're like, we've had enough of you. you got to get out of here. And just kind of a really fun song, upbeat uh, rhythm here, and uh, just kind of fun, fun lyrics. Speaking of lyrics, why don't we talk about best lyric? Kevin, what did you have? Uh, I'm going with a line from One Way Out, and it says, One way to make a Chinese suit, one way to make a duck salute. Um I have no idea what that means, but uh, I think it gives you a taste of the sort of fun, random uh, lyricism of Liam Hayes. What about you, Derek? What's your favorite lyric? Mine's come from Keys to Heaven, and he says, They offered me the keys to heaven, so I'd stay inside their hell. They chased me right up to the doorway, because when I left, they knew I'd tell. And, uh, yeah, once again, just kind of, you know, having fun here with uh, some Im imagery of heaven and hell and a broken down green Mercedes, which uh, happens in the first part of the song that I'm only throwing in now. Um, so that brings us to overall rating. Um, Kevin, what do you think of Slurp? Is it good to the last drop, or do you kind of let it, you, you know, let, let some sit? It's, um, it's a little too sugary for my taste, I guess I would say. Uh, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 5. It pains me to do that. Um, I know that Liam Hayes... 
uh, from what I've read anyway, is an amazing artist. I felt like there was a lot of hype around him and this album, and I felt like he didn't live up to his talent and its like fullest potential. Um, I'll start with the cons, and then I'll get to the pros, because there are some great things about this album, but um, it's just a little too nostalgic. There's nothing really new going on here. It's a little too pretty and precious. The pop hooks are beautiful, but really too slick to just grab a hold of, um, at least for me as a listener. And um, the non-songs don't really add anything. It feels like sort of forced weirdness. I wish you would have got weird within a song instead. Um, but on the pro side, it's very immediate. It's very economical and efficient. As Derek mentioned, these two- and three-minute bursts. Um, it's weird. It's fun. It's charming pop. He spans lounge and soul and psych and glam and garage. Um, but overall, I feel like he's capable of so much more. So I'm sorry, Liam, but going with a two out of five. What do you say, Derek? Kevin, I'm giving this a three out of five. Um, really kind of echoing a lot of the points you made there. Um, the, I really, I don't know if I'd necessarily say too sugarcoated for me, uh, but at the same time, it, it felt like he was really trying to keep the songs to their bare minimums, and, and by that, I mean, you know, really find a good hook or melody. Um, it, as you mentioned, yeah, maybe too, too good of one, uh, and, and uh, not really too, meandering too far away from that. So I think, you know, some of the focus, if you will, you know, on the attention to details, which, you know, as your key track was held earlier, um, I think that that in itself was a challenge and kind of a hurdle you had to get to, you know, by keeping it concise while, you know, maximizing on those areas. I, I, I respect that, you know, that approach. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I, you know, and I think that reflected itself, as we mentioned, in the short duration, the tracks, I'd, maybe two, I think, were over three minutes um, I, I completely agree with you on the non-songs, I think, as you described them. Um, I didn't even really know how to describe them. You know, I wanted to say short, more scatterbrained, it almost felt like at times. I think you're exactly right. Uh, weird just for the sake of being weird, uh, but not really constructively weird. And I'd like to say, and I'd like to think here at last week's album, we like constructively weird. Um, so there you have it, a three out of five for myself, a two out of five from Kevin. Uh, so that, that's a five out of ten. Um, if you're into short, nostalgic pop songs, I think you should really go check this out. Um, if not, you, you might not be missing out on too much. Um, so there you have it. Um, uh, thanks again for joining us here at last week's album. Don't forget to su subscribe to our channel. Um, you know, here at last week's album, we're two opinions uh, on the best new underrated music in one take. And until next time, I'm Derek. And I'm Kevin. See you next time, guys.